Hello, live from uh, 14th Street, Union Square Park. Uh, today's festivities are about to begin. We're going to let you guys just chill out, see uh, the, the, the normalcy before it gets crazy. And the march should be coming here within 15 or 20 minutes. So, hey, Mona, you want to say hello? Hello. Mona does this. Hey, tell them. You, you tell them. Go ahead. I'm Mona Jong. I'm the state's cannabis policy reporter for Politico, and I'm here to cover the parade today. Yeah. So check her out online, and I'm going to put the camera up and just stop talking. So have a good night and enjoy the shoe. All right, we're live. Woohoo! Okay, we are active. I just hope it stays active. Okay, guys, we're starting this puppy up. Joints for Jeff. I'm coming. Hi, baby. I want to say hello to you. My table's right there, so okay. I'll go over so there and give you one. Yeah, sure. I like your shirt. <laughs> Wait, I'll take my mask off. Sure, sure. Oh, you do? All right. No, no, it's okay. Everybody okay. Mike, Mike, Mike. I think I need my mic. There we go. Check, check, check. Peace, everyone. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Give it up. Let's go to you. Give it up for the activists in the crowd, the artists in the crowd. Give it up for the people here. Homie, homie, watch the rail. Oh my God, can you just chill out? Put your hands up, let's come on. Hey, yo, male, female, medicine, retail, modern, ancient, recreation, and the patient, counterculture, corporate culture, land, race, hybrid, public, private, open, secret, THC, CBD, stone, got a lot of energy. Hey, yo, love, hated, flower, concentrated, underground, regulated, spiritual, scientific, neural, and the mystic, flower, weed. Perfect, yeah. Whoa, I freestyle it. I want to hear a free one. No chorus. No written. No written. All right, one time, he was asking if we're freestyling, and we are freestyling yes. right now in this minute. So right now, freestyle off the top of the mind, it's no longer a crime to roll up a dime on the block. When we stop, no more fear of a cop. 90% of the rest go for black and brown. That's what we're making the sound, attacking it now. He said he was fighting the new world. Hold on a second, hold on a second. No time to interrupt when I'm full of corruption with the vibe. When I'm flowing from inside, let the sound be your guide. When I relax with fashion, action with vibe. I'm giving you the sound when I do it. Shout out to my tribe, who keeps the vibe alive. When we flow and them blowing, we give respect. Big up to the women, let's give a mic.
mic check for the yeah. women activists non-stop we can throw a fist in the air we came here to celebrate and share not to feel scared <laughs> by the 5-0 that's why we freestyle with a live flow this is a live show this is about survival this is what we're saying it's a freestyle recital so shout out to every activist who put in themselves at risk right now is the day we can celebrate this so pump up with this giving the vibe we we'll never miss flowing like this grace got loose no more fucking diamonds, it's time! It's fell over! What happened? This whole thing fell over! Oh no! And this guy is definitely closing our guys. You got it? I don't want this here though. Who moved it? I, I moved it there because it fell over. I don't know why it fell over. It, the wind blew it over. Oh, it went boom! I have your phone in my hand. Oh, keep doing it, keep doing it. I gotta get this up and run. Oh, yes! Christ, man, when shit happens. All right, thank you for being here because I would. Hi, everyone watching. The camera fell over. Sorry, Sorry. guys. We have technical Baba. information. <laughs> oh Lord, hold on, guys. I gotta do this. Technical difficulties. Fuck me. When shit hits the fan, it hits the fan hard. <laughs> okay. Everything's fine. Weed is legal. There we go. Choice floating around. Keep going, just keep going. Thank you. Woo! I didn't break my camera. Oh yeah, fuck it. Up. We're gonna have to Senator Chuck Steve. I don't care about what's out here. I want him in. Thank you, I'm so happy. I know, I'm gonna get the police in a few minutes. Senator. Senator. Give them all coffee too. At the same damn time. See which one survives. Hey man, how you doing, baby? Assembly member Alex Morrow. You want to send it to Maloney? I can make him try to fix it. Attorney General Patricia James. And your sandbag. And the Shinnecock Nation. So hang around. We're here till 2.30. We're doing it a little different this time. Oh, Jesus. I want to welcome Juanza Williams from Vocal New York. The director of organizing. Work closely with Start Smart New York to legalize marijuana cannabis here and pass the MRTA. MRTA, Marijuana Regulation Taxation Act. Sorry about this, guys, passed. having technical issues. Juanza William. No, I got it. Don't even. Oh, no, I got it. It's the guy with the t shirt. That guy. Good morning, New York. So, he's nuts. Yeah, he's got to go. I'm gonna have to to the cops. I won't be long, I don't want to be but first I want to say my name is Jawanta James Williams. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of organizing at Vocal New York. Vocal New York is a statewide membership grassroots organization building power to end AIDS, mass incarceration, homelessness, and the racist, classist drug war, and end its consequences, hepatitis C, and the overdose crisis. We have chapters in Rochester, Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, and Westchester County, and of course the five boroughs. So... Today, I am celebrating the fact that and since 2013, since the introduction of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act, Vocal New York members, leaders, and staff have worked year after year, long before I was a leader in Vocal New York, before I worked with the organization, to make this bill a reality. So, of course, I want to thank the Star Smart Coalition, Cassandra Frederick um, of the DPA, Melissa Moore of DPA, so many folks inside of Star Smart that really made a huge difference in this fight to legalize. Now, of course, what I most want to share here is that though we have legalized marijuana in a way that attempts to restore and repair the harms of racist prohibition for the last 40 years in New York State, it is not the end of the drug war. The drug war is a racist political system that's never been about health, never been about public safety, and has always been about crushing political dissent. The drug war is serpentine, and just like capitalism, it is a tool of capitalism. Capitalism is serpentine. Capitalism, this way, this economic system of organizing our society, depends upon the dehumanization of human beings. It depended upon the slaughter of indigenous people, the removal of those folks from their lands, from their ancestral lands, land that we still stand on today. And because capitalism needs people to abuse, it needs a dehumanization. It therefore needs the ideologies of corruption, the ideologies of domination, namely white supremacy. So if capitalism needs white supremacy, and white supremacy needs a dehumanization, the devaluing of black, brown, and poor people, 
then it produces a culture of violence, a culture of annihilation ultimately. And that culture is responsible for prohibition. That culture is responsible for the drug war. And the drug war itself has been the vehicle, the primary vehicle of mass incarceration in the United States of America and all across the world. So when we legalize marijuana, we say to all of those people that are victims of the drug war, that is not true, that we should be doing something vastly different. So what I'm really here to say to everyone here, that we did not end the drug war by legalizing marijuana, and that the next step for us all is to decriminalize all drugs towards legalization, towards creating a safe supply of all the substances that people use. Marijuana reminds us that this has always been about a moralization. It has always been about political dissent, political crushing of black, brown, of workers, of Mexican immigrants. The reason we call marijuana marijuana in the states is because of that attempted, attempted racialization of this plant, of this use. So that's why I don't call it cannabis. I call it marijuana so I have an opportunity to remind people that in the United States we call cannabis marijuana specifically for drug war purposes, specifically for domination. So I call on everyone here not to just celebrate in this moment, but to double down in your commitment to end the racist, classist drug war. Because if we do not end the drug war, we are not affirming black life. Because if we are to affirm black lives, we must understand how the drug war, how the smell of cannabis, how the perception, how the possession, how the use of drugs, all drugs, has been the primary entry point of police engagement with black and brown people. It has often been the cause True. of extrajudicial killings. So when black and brown people are killed because they have entry with police using laws to legitimize that engagement, then they use those same laws as justification for our murders. We just saw that with George Floyd and the release of his toxicology report. We just saw that with the extrajudicial killing of Breonna Taylor in her bed after the claims of drug distribution. So if we want to end police violence, if we want to end prisons, if we call ourselves abolitionists, we have to be abolitionists across the board. We have to hold that complexity that the world that we're trying to build, the abolitionist future, is a future that has drug users. And not all drug use, as we all know, is problematic drug use. So we have to be able to take away from this situation remove ourselves from the frameworks of reality that is rooted in a dehumanization, that is rooted in a mass delusion known as white supremacy specifically for the purposes of maintaining and perpetuating and expanding capitalism, which is antithetical to democracy, which is antithetical to human life, which is antithetical to building the kind of future that each one of us deserve. And marijuana is a microcosm of what is possible for us. And also I want to correct all of us here. The 40% reinvestment into community funds or into social equity funds of marijuana legalization is not reparation. It is restitution. It is a disservice to the word reparation, to the concept, to the idea, to the legacies, to the realities of chattel slavery, of Jim Crow, of mass incarceration, of virulent anti-black racism to call marijuana legalization reinvestments reparations. It is not reparations. It is a microcosm. Reparations is something much vaster, something much more, much, much more difficult to imagine and much more important. So with that, again, my name is Juanza James Williams. I use your pronouns and I'm calling on you to go forth to do the work to not think that we have won the fight because marijuana legalization is only, again, a microcosm of what we need to be doing. Fight for full decrim, fight for the creation of a safe supply of all drugs, and then fight for full legalization of all drugs and to build the loving and caring social and economic and healthcare infrastructure that we need to take care of our people when they run into issues with drug use. Because remember, the vast majority of us that use drugs do not develop an addiction or a substance use disorder. The vast majority of us are totally fine because we have access to healthcare, because we have access to stable housing. So, thank you so much. Let's hear it for Juanza Williams. Awesome speech. All right, we have a lot of elected officials here today. Please welcome State Senator Luis Sepulveda, Sepulveda the New York State Senator from the 32nd yeah. Senate District from the Bronx, my home borough. Bronx in the house. Is the Bronx in the house? Right here! Come on.
Bronx. You guys are from the Bronx. We can do much better than that. Is the Bronx in the house? Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Great to be here. You know, I was one of the legislators that was very proud to cast my vote and help the state get where we are today, which is legalization of recreational marijuana. One of the things that took us so long, we should have been one of the first states, was the uh, social equity component. We wanted to make sure that communities of color that were negatively impacted, that suffered the inequality of criminal justice in our communities, our young men and women that were getting stigmatized with marijuana convictions. The biggest fight we had was that we wanted to make sure that those communities that were impacted got the funding to benefit from this new industry. And so we set aside 40%, and yes, it's not reparations, but it's a way to make sure that the communities that suffered so much like marijuana convictions get a leg up so they can benefit so they can no longer have criminal records and they can also prosper with this new industry. We're going to continue to work towards de decriminalizing a lot of drugs that we know are racist in concept, racist in, con in execution. We know that the war on drugs was a war on black and brown communities. And thankfully, in New York State, we're working to eradicate the injustices and the systemic racism that involves drug convictions, the convictions, especially marijuana convictions. So stay tuned. We're going to do a lot more work. We're going to make it fair. We're going to make sure that our communities benefit from this new industry and make sure that you benefit not because you have a lot of money, not because you're white, or not because your parents have a large bank account. We want to make sure that it's fair for everyone. Thank you all. God bless you all, and let's have a great time today. No more 62! No more 62, that's correct. All right, everybody, thank you for coming out. Uh, up next, we have Pilar De Jesus from All That Jive NYC. Pilar worked closely which starts smart New York on passing the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act. So please give a round of applause for Blar! I don't know what to say, but oh my god, marijuana is fucking legal! Say it again! Marijuana is fucking legal! And I'm so happy to be here. As you said, my name is Bilal De Jesus, founder of All That Jive, but I'm also a board member of New York City Normal, and I'm so happy to be here, able to smoke with everyone, celebrate, the sun is shining, even the sun is happy. The sun is like, you know, showing its love on this plant that I was gifted today. It was awesome, thank you. Yes. Um, I just want to say really quickly, you know, we worked really hard to get this bill passed. It wasn't easy. If you know anything about politics, it's really, really exhausting. And we really had some really good leaders. There are some here today, but you know, there were a lot of advocates working hard to get this bill passed. We could smoke outside. Whoa! As long as tobacco is allowed. Just to be clear, but one big thing, especially as a Latina who's been born and raised in East Harlem, which is one of the districts that's been the most targeted, cops can no longer stop me from smelling like marijuana. That's a big thing. It's a big, big thing. Yes, we can make money, but we will no longer be molested by the police for smelling like this amazing plant. And I'm so happy to be here to celebrate with everyone. I think I gotta cut it short. So thank you. And I think now I'm introducing the next speaker, right? I know this guy very, I don't need this toy. I know this next speaker very well. He's a mentor of mine. He's helped me collect signatures when I ran for office one time in my life. He, he's just an amazing leader on the state level. He was a co-sponsor to the bill, the 
MRTA, the Marijuana Regulation Taxation. I'd like to introduce everyone to my good friend, Harvey, Assemblyman Harvey Epstein. How you feeling out there? I don't hear anybody. How we feeling out there? Here we go. So think about where we are today. Who would have thought 10 years ago we decriminalized personal use of marijuana? Now we legalize marijuana. We're going to have places all over the city and state where people of color who've been discriminated, who've been arrested, who've been convicted for decades can go open businesses, storefronts to say this is not illegal behavior. This is a market. This is an industry. And we believe in it. Today, we are in a different place. We've decriminalized, we've legalized, now we need to do more. We have a criminal justice system that incarcerates black and brown people every day. We have a moment in time to change that. We've done that with ending walking while trans. We've done that by ending solitary confinement as we know it today. We've done that by allowing people who are on parole to vote. We've done that time and time again. We have so much to do to legalize drugs, to decriminalize drugs, to, de to decriminalize sex work, because we have a system that's broken. We need to fix it. Today's a great day. We have done so much, but there's so much to do. Thank you for letting me be with you. Remember, we win this together. All right, thank you, Assemblymember Epstein. Um, next up, we have New York State Attorney General Letitia James. She's also former public advocate, former city council member, and elected in 2008. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. How are you? Is Brooklyn in the house? Yeah. Where's Brooklyn at? I love you. Yeah, here we go, Brooklyn. Okay. <laughs> it's great to be here with everyone. I want to thank all of you for all that you have done during this pandemic. I really appreciate all of those who have made sacrifices. I know we're marching today, but let me also tell you what today is too, and we've got to be reminded of this. Today is May Day. What is May Day? Yeah. So we've got to stand up for workers and unions and immigrants in this country, okay? And we will not be divided by that. And we will not allow anyone to use the pandemic as an excuse to trample on the rights of immigrants and undocumented workers and immigrants. It's important that we legalize and create a pathway to citizenship for all of those individuals who are now in the shadows. I don't know about you, but I see them, we see them. They were essential during this pandemic and they're essential today. Listen, we all know that the war on drugs has for far too long been a war on poor people and people of color, right? And I have long advocated for the legalization of adult recreational use of cannabis because I believe it is a social and racial and a criminal justice issue. If you believe that it is a social and racial and a criminal justice issue, make some noise. In many states all across this country, recreational use has been legalized and arrests have plummeted by a large percentage. And they are of sons, our daughters, our brothers, our neighbors, and they're mostly men of color. And these young men are punished for this behavior that others seem to turn a blind eye to for people of other races and other socioeconomic statuses. And that's not right. And I believe that simple legalization, my friends, is not enough to right those wrongs. It's not enough to right those wrongs. We cannot assume that changing the law to legalize cannabis will be enough to deliver the justice 
an opportunity that we hope it will bring. It's a good start, but we need more. Make no mistake, legaliz legalizing rec recreational cannabis means more money for our states. But, but, legalized cannabis and those states that have legalized it have seen significant increases in their revenues. But we, because this is a state that believes in equality and justice and equity, we've got to provide opportunities for everyone. 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 And particularly people who have been locked out of the sunshine of opportunity for far too long. It's important that we focus on communities that have been devastated by this war on drugs. And New York has indeed come a long way. We used to be the marijuana arrest capital of the world. I don't think you heard me. New York was once the marijuana arrest capital of the world. Boo! And so, if you believe in justice like I do, then those individuals who are most harmed by the war on drugs, that must be part of the new economy. They must be part of the new economy. And we must provide access to everyone, especially communities of color that have felt the impact of law enforcement in this country and in this city and in this state. So I hope that you would join me. I hope that when we begin the discussion about this legislation, when we pass regulations, that everyone, that all people are at the table of power and that we again have a conversation with all of those banks and because individuals who obviously want to take opportunity, want to take advantage of this opportunity, can't just walk into a bank and ask for a loan, right? Because cannabis on the federal level is still treated as a Schedule One drug under the Federal Controlled Substance Act. So banks will not issue loans to those looking for startup funding. It's unfortunate, but it's a federal issue. And we've got to focus on the federal government to ensure that they change the laws so that everyone can take advantage of this of this issue. And so we have to work together and ladders of opportunity so that everyone who wants to participate in the industry, who, we got to educate individuals. We've got to be change agents in our communities. And of course, we all got to work together to again lift up all boats and leave no boat behind. So let us all stand together, create opportunities, and focus on justice, and make this legislation an opportunity for equalizing all individuals. I thank you for this. I look forward to working with all of you. It's on to upward economic mobility and opportunity for all communities. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for our Attorney General, Letitia James. What a turnout. Hey, everybody, just separate a little bit, please, if you can. Just, you know, we're supposed to distance a little bit today, so just please just keep separated as much as you can. That's a pretty cool uh, costume out there. What is that? What is that? That's a. This is a joint. Okay, I love it. All right, so we're we'll continuing with our front legislators here today. Please welcome U.S. Representative from Congress, from New York, Carolyn Maloney from the 12th District, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Troy. Thank everybody for being here today. It's great to come and celebrate with all of you. We've got a lot to celebrate. President Biden unveiled a lot of things, including a path to citizenship and comprehensive immigration reform, which we must pass. And we passed the PRO Act to strengthen labor. But we are here today to stand up against the over-criminalization of ca cannabis and to demand that Congress finally take action. 
sweeping legislation like the Moore Act, which the House passed last year, would finally and officially remove cannabis from the list of federally controlled harmful substances and very importantly expunge low-level marijuana convictions that have disproportionately harmed people and communities of color. More than 90 percent of the American public believe marijuana should be legal either for recreational or medical use and yet there are still too many people disproportionately black men locked up and trapped in the criminal justice system for something that is completely legal in 16 states, including New York and the District of Columbia and 19 other states that have legalized medical marijuana. Other bills before Congress, like the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act, the Safe Banking Act, which the House just passed, will protect businesses and our economy by allowing marijuana-related businesses and states with some form of legalized marijuana to access the banking system. This is long overdue. If we are serious about criminal justice reform, racial justice, and the economy, we need to get rid of these antiquated cannabis laws that have harmed our most vulnerable communities and we will keep working and now we can grow three plants each of us <laughs> thank you so much for having us it's great to celebrate with you Let's hear for Carolyn Maloney, our representative from Congress, New York representative for legalizing cannabis. Awesome. All right, so we're continuing with uh, another assembly member, Emily Gallagher, 50th Assembly Yay! District from Williamsburg, Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and was a supporter of MRTA, Marijuana Regulation Taxation Act, which passed on March 30th. I think I need a Thank you, Cannabis Parade New York City and my fellow elected officials, all the organizers, activists, smokers, and celebrators. Happy May Day, happy International Workers Day. I'm Emily Gallagher and I represent North Brooklyn in the New York State Assembly. And while I proudly voted with my colleagues to finally legalize cannabis in our state, I have to tell you, it's been basically legal in majority white neighborhoods I represent for a while now. And in the white suburb where I grew up and where I attended college. Prohibition was never about stopping marijuana use because basically everyone kept smoking the whole time. It's about selectively enforcing laws to criminalize and control black and brown people. And at least with this one widely used and widely enjoyed plant, we're putting an end to it. We might consider doing the same with all other drugs, too. But the legalization of cannabis in New York isn't just about dismantling one dimension of incarceration and over-policing. I have seen marijuana help people wean themselves off deadly opioids, recover more comfortably from cancer, and manage chronic disease. I look forward to the day when everyone can equally enjoy the benefits of marijuana in all of its forms across this country. We will be better for it. Finally, I want to say on this May Day that we have a responsibility to fight for a legal marijuana industry in New York that respects workers' rights, that's densely unionized, that hires and empowers and is run by people who used to sell weed in the informal economy and which repairs the racist harms of the war on drugs. We cannot let it be dominated by a handful of corporations. We cannot let it cut out the very people who have been criminalized and abused under the prohibition. So we need to keep marching, keep organizing, and keep pushing until we are all free. Thank you.
Let's hear it for Emily Gallagher, one of our House, one of our Assembly representatives who voted for Marta, M-A-R-T-A, is actually a sponsor. We now have one of my favorite people, New Jersey activist Leo Bridgewater, who's the founder of Bridge H2O, based in Trenton. They helped legalize cannabis in New Jersey. Leo! Leo, do you need a hand? Happy Saturday, everybody. You know, this is, uh, you know, at this point, we've done this so many times. No need to go into who's who, what's what. Just know that I am the National Director of Veterans Outreach with Minorities for Medical Marijuana. I'd be remiss if I didn't first give a quick shout out to my wife, Dr. Lashana Bridgewater over there. Thank you, babe, for supporting me. And I'd be even more remiss if I did not explain who this person is to my right. This is Jossie Edwards the New Jersey chapter president for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Now for years, I've been coming up here on this stage, on this stage, uh, cussing up the storm, telling everybody exactly where we are today. So what does that mean? That means that at this point, now the real work starts. We got it legalized, but now the real work starts because now there's this whole new audience of people who don't know how the culture works. They don't know how we do. They don't realize that this culture is tribal. It's filled with chieftains and shamans and warriors and village elders. They don't know who we are and now we have to let them know. They also need to know that this tribe is not defined by city lines. This is regional. Our tribe might be small, but we are everywhere. And when it's time to get shit done, we get shit done. Now, for you taxpaying citizens, I'm the reason why you don't give a veteran the microphone, because I don't have a problem with being uncomfortable. I'm comfortable with being uncomfortable. And if we're gonna get some shit shook up, then we're gonna have to start making other people uncomfortable. So it is important to us that we start now paying attention to who is going to be in those commissioner seats. Who is going to be the ones in that advocacy in those advocacy uh, seats? Is it going to be somebody like some one of us, a tribal member? If it's not, then we have to make sure that happens. And whatever goes down here in New York, trust me when I tell you, there's a ripple effect in New Jersey. And whatever happens in New Jersey, trust me, it's a ripple effect in New York. We know how this game works. We've been playing this game. I'm not going to stay up here any longer, but I just want to say RIP to Doug Green because I'm channeling my inner Doug Green. Shout out to Melissa Moore and, and oh, meet Dr. Adrian Adams the New York chapter president of Minorities for Medical Marijuana. So if any of you need some help with getting some shit started, these the two you come find, and then you come get me. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, let's hear it for Leo Bridgewater. This is a special uh, introduction for me. I'm introducing State Senator Alessandra Biaggi, 34th Senate District in the Bronx, Westchester, and by neighborhood Riverdale. I met the, the before she was senator. I met her, and I supported her, and I told her a little bit about cannabis. She became an MRTA co-sponsor. So please, my favorite New York State Senator, let's hear it for Alessandra Tabanji! Good afternoon, New York! I'm gonna be very brief. I'm Alessandra Biaggi, and I just have a few things to say. 
We are here today not because of the electeds. We are here today because of the people who have organized in New York City for years. Because of the communities who would not take no for an answer, who would not allow for marijuana and the low-level offenses that continue to put black and brown people in jail and continue to criminalize our communities, but to make sure that we were pushing back on the war on drugs, that fake term that everybody liked to use years ago. This is a amazing accomplishment of what people can do when they organize for what is right. This is about social equity, it is about racial equity, and it is about damn time that we legalize marijuana in the city and the state of New York. So I am proud to have voted for it, I am proud to stand with it, and I will not tolerate the criminalization of black and brown communities over anything anymore, especially marijuana. Thank you very much. That was Alessandra Biagi, state senator from the Bronx. Who's from the Bronx? Yeah. Who's from Brooklyn? How about some Queens? Harlem. All right. Well, we're very excited. We have uh, a friend of mine who's had a long history in the cannabis industry, started as an activist, a yippie, putting on events in Washington, D.C., and helping us here in New York. He moved to California and started Harborside Health Center, one of the biggest dispensaries in the world. He's now with The Last Prisoner Project, and he also works with ArcView Group and with Radio Free Cannabis. Let's hear it for Steve D'Angelo. Thank you, Steve. Hello, New York, and thank you for this historic and wonderful and joyous day. Yes. I, at the first time I, I marched in this march was 1975. I was 17 years old. And there have been a lot of marches and demonstrations and a lot of fear and a lot of pain over the years since then. So to be able to walk down the street today and light that joint up, my first legal joint ever in New York City, it was a thing of beauty. So I want to thank each and every one of you who had a hand in doing it, however small that hand was or however big that hand was. And I want to thank you on behalf of the people who aren't here, who worked not just for years, but for decades to bring this day about. Doug Green, who's here in every pop of smoke. Right? Here's Doug's father. Thank you, brother. Doug Green is here. Jack Herrer is here. Dennis Perone is here. Brownie Mary is here. Who else is here? Who else is here? All our people are here. All our people are here. And I'll tell you what, we are a global tribe. There's hundreds of millions of us all around the world. We've had the same experiences with this plant. We've seen to learn the same lessons and we've developed the same value system. And we did not legalize this plant to make a bunch of rich people even richer. We legalized it to help us change the world. And we will build a world that lives by the lessons that this plant teaches us. A world that is generous, a world that is just, a world where racism and sexism and homophobia and every other goddamn ism that oppresses us and dominates us is a thing of history, where we're living in the bright sunshine, sitting under the shade of our cannabis plants in peace with each other. That's where we're headed, brothers and sisters. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. Here for Steve D'Angelo all the way from California. He came in just for this event today. One of the leaders of the cannabis movement. One of the leaders of the movement here in New York is Tanya Osborne. We know her from Women Grow. And these, she's director of community outreach for Women Grow, a great organization. And she's the founder of the Canna Diva community. And a former New York Cannabis Parade and Rally MC. Welcome, Tanya Osborne. Thank you. Go, Tanya! Hey, everybody! Where's all the women? Where's all the women? Listen, we know, in reality, women do the damn thing. Yes. I am here to 
Center. I am here to represent Women Grow and the Canadiva. Uh, we were very excited. I mean, honestly, for me, my first cannabis parade was in 1991. It was not legal then for my 30th anniversary. We are legal in New York State. Thank you very much. I have been really lucky to be part of all of the advocates in New York, really helping to push this with Drug Policy Alliance to get this over. What I'm really excited about is I represent a community of entrepreneurial women who want to have a place in this industry, and now they have opportunities. I represent a community of mothers in this space. We don't got to be victimized anymore, criminalized anymore for our consumption. We can tell CPS to kiss our ass. I also represent a huge community of caregivers in this state. We can fight for our patients and know that our patients are going to be taken care of. But here's what I need you all to do. I need you all to be diligent in holding our representatives accountable. I need you to be diligent in building your businesses the right way. I need you to be incredibly diligent with being an educator in this country, in, in this city. Right now, if you are a consumer, a caregiver, or an advocate, or an entrepreneur, your job is to educate. You have to educate people. The stigma is real. If you are a woman or a mom, you know it 100%. The stigma is real. So we all have to educate. I'm so excited for what's on the future. I actually have the pleasure of announcing another woman, actually Senator uh, Jessica Ramos. She's from the uh, 13th Senate District in Queens. She sponsored the MRTA as well. She's actually working so hard, not just in cannabis, but in food, making sure that there's no food insecurity, working hard for uh, women and minority-owned businesses and the LGBTQ community. Where is she? Is she nearby? Bye-bye. Hey. Senator Jessica Ramos. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, New York. And happy belated 420. It's good to be celebrating with you on May Day, actually, because the MRTA is all about keeping working people in mind. We wanted to legalize marijuana in New York in a way that actually takes into account the black and brown communities that have been disproportionately adversely affected by the criminalization and prohibition of cannabis. It was a ton of work, but we were able to win some very important transformational, transformative justice uh, ideals, making sure that people can expunge their records automatically. If uh, all, of, all of their convictions were actually legalized in our bill, but there's so much more work to do. Over the next few years, you're going to see us uh, come together to really create a new industry in the sun, out of the shadows, and we need to make sure we're all involved. We want our licenses to go to black and brown people. We want the licenses to go to worker cooperatives. We want money to be for our communities, not for big businesses and not for the banks. The banking issue with cannabis is very dire because the federal government has not legalized marijuana yet. And that's why I hear Chuck Schumer might be on the way, but we need him to commit as majority leader to be on the front lines of fighting to legalize cannabis at the federal level so that we can prosper, our communities can prosper, and we can show the rest of the country how it's done right here in New York. Thank you for everything the advocates did. This victory is yours. Thank you. Hey there, let's hear it for State Senator Jessica Ramos. Thanks for being here today. So we're waiting for the Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. He'll be with us momentarily. 
And right now, I'm going to introduce a friend of mine, a really great cannabis activist based in Brooklyn, Grizzly Bocart. He's with the Rebel Minded Society, a Rebel Minded Society, a Cannaware Society, and is known for organizing events in Brooklyn. It's here for Grizzly. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Congratulations, you did it. But like many of us said today, the work is just getting started. We have to prepare ourselves for what's to come. It's important that we protect the legacy market. And as the legacy market, it's important to understand that throughout the years, our experience with the plant, that we have specialized and we have perfected the hustle. But it's time for us to understand the business side of it. Because in order for us to be able to transition to the legal market, it's important that we have an understanding of business in order to be able to compete with all these big corps. So it's important that we understand and do our due diligence and have a good understanding of what to come with cannabis in New York. Thank you. Check us out, Cannabis Society. How you doing? I have to say Grizzly's the best dressed man in cannabis. All right. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Floyd Jarvis, the founder of Ganja War Veterans for Equity. He worked with Start Smart New York on the MRTA. What does that stand for? Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act. Hi, good day, everyone. Shout out to the NYC Cannabis Parade. Shout out to uh, Drug Policy Alliance, all the advocates that worked on passing the MRTA. Now is the time for us to do the hard work. My name is Floyd Jarvis. I'm the founder of Ganja War Veterans for Equity. I'm also the author of a working paper called Keeping Black Markets Black, a stratification, economic, public health, and reparative justice model for cannabis equity in the city of New York. Shout out to my man, Big Apple Rolling Papers. Now, it is key that we prioritize the black market in this new MRTA in New York City. Uh, new York City has the opportunity to be the largest cannabis consumption market in the world and the black market. All of us have been doing this for the past 90 years. We have the model, we have perfected the model, we've been doing quality control. So now with state intervention and state funds, we should be doing a lot better. So let's focus on the black market uh, and check out Ganja War Veterans for Equity. Thank you. Hey, let's hear it for Floyd Jarvis. Thank you very much, Floyd. We have Landon Dayas. He's the Hellfighters Pack and the Pat and the Plant Inspired Future. He's going to talk to us about the future for cannabis in New York. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's good to see New York City is back. It's good to see that we fought back COVID. We're here together as a people to celebrate the passing of the MRTA and cannabis legalization. But just like any day, the fight is just beginning. The hard work starts now. This is when we gotta dig in, draw the lines, and understand what is truly at stake. For every second of my speech today represents a person that is currently incarcerated for cannabis. As much as I've been in this industry, I still think about my little cousin Karan that is currently sitting in a jail cell in Georgia because he had a felony cannabis charge in California where marijuana is legal. So outside of making sure that President Biden takes the steps to expunge the records for every American that is sitting in a jail for cannabis, we also have to look at those who had up charges and make sure that their charges are recategorized. Unfortunately, the war on cannabis has been a war on certain communities, but together seeing the diverse network of people that are here fighting for a better New York, for a better country, makes me smile. What I do understand is someone in the cannabis industry, as a person of color, it is difficult. That means we need to be together. 
working together, fighting together, raising money together to ensure that corporate cannabis does not dominate. At one time, I believed that I could help make a difference in the inside. I worked as a lawyer for a corporate cannabis company. I sat in the boardroom as the only person of color. And every day, every minute, my soul started to leave my body because I realized they just did not care. They did not understand. We were just a means to an end instead of a means to a better beginning. So right here, what I'm asking for you is to be so involved in the regulation process. Talking to our elected officials and hold their feet to the fire. Understand that Governor Cuomo has an opportunity to put people on that cannabis board that look like us, that fight for us, that are part of us. And if we do such, if we do that, I promise you we can make an equitable cannabis industry that's going to be equitable for everybody. We have a chance to help the legacy market integrate into the regulated market and do well. We have to make sure that dispensaries, cultivation, process, processing, delivery is equally given to all to those in the community. We have a chance to make a real economy here to create 40,000 jobs. Let's do it. Thank you so much. My name is Landon Days. I'm the CFO of Plan Inspire Future. I'm a cannabis attorney. But what we all today together are brothers and sisters. And thank you so much. Have a great day. Here for Landon Days. All right, so everybody can see we have a very famous person over here, I think. I think people can see that we have the majority leader here. Senator from New York, Senator Chuck Schumer. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, let me just say, everybody, a couple of things. First, I want to say to all of you, I am thrilled to be with you today at this great gathering, which I know has been a long time in coming. And let's have a thank you to Steve Bloom. There you are. Okay. Now, I want to do two things here. First, celebrate the just, equitable legalization of marijuana we have accomplished together in New York. And second, tell you about the fight that I am leading to legalize marijuana nationally in all 50 states. Now, we're all here, we're all here because we know that we must move past the failed model of the war on drugs. Young men and young women, disproportionately young men and women of color, have been arrested and jailed for even carrying small amounts of marijuana, a charge that came with exorbitant punitive penalties, a serious criminal record, and so many of them could never recover from that. We can never let that happen again. These were young men and young women with dreams of their own, with promise, with potential, <coughs> who had their lives ruined, ruined, simply because they happened to have a joint in their pocket. This over-criminalization of marijuana hurt individuals, but it hurt entire communities. Change has been urgently needed for so long. And that is why when you all asked me to stand with you, the organizers like Senator Ramos and Senator Biaggi and many others, and Tish James, she's here. Am I leaving any legislators here? Uh, many. And Harvey Epstein. And Carolyn Maloney. I'm good. Okay. And all of them I joined with you and told the state, get off your butt and pass MRTA now. And guess what? They did. I pushed for the MRTA because I knew that legalizing marijuana itself is not enough. Amen. We need investment in communities harmed by the war on drugs. We need social equity in licensing entrepreneurs. And we need the expungement of records once and for all. Amen. Amen. We 
needed to start repairing the harms the war on drugs has done to New Yorkers, and with a huge coalition, we did just that. We raised our voices. We made it possible for the MRTA to become law. So I want to say it was an honor, honor, to work with some of, you, some of my friends who I've known for years in the legislature. Someone who helped me get elected to the Senate when she was just a council member in Buffalo, and now the majority leader, Crystal Peebles Stokes. <laughs> and Liz Kruger from, I guess, this district. Uh -huh. And Diane Savino yes. from the great borough of Staten Island. And organizers like Cassandra Frederic. Is she here? We love her. Are you here, Cassandra? She is a dynamo. She is incredible. And of course, um, here in New York, Melissa Moore, who led the charge. She here? They're great. And of course, Vocal New York, who relentlessly, hi Vocal, <laughs> who relentlessly worked. When things got tough, what did they do? Did they give up? No. No. They got dirty. Did they throw up their hands and say, we're not going to get this done? No. Nope. They doubled down, put their heads down, made sacrifices in their personal lives, missed time with friends and families spent hours, hours and hours in frustrating meetings and got it done. Those at the state level who led the charge here, many of whom are out here, you inspire me. And so let me just say, I am so happy we got this over the finish line. So Amen. happy. Amen. The legalization in New York is the most ambitious in the country. In, in the critical areas of racial and economic justice, it sets new standards. It makes real, tangible impacts on the lives of millions. So let's take a moment and celebrate Amen. what we have already accomplished. Yeah! All across the state, from Buffalo to Brooklyn, communities devastated by the war on drugs are beginning to be renewed, repaired, and made whole again. Young people are able to celebrate today without a fear that a little bit of marijuana in their pocket could ruin their lives. Less more freedom, less fear. Amen. Right now, somewhere in this city, hopeful entrepreneurs are gathering together, thinking up a future marijuana business that will provide jobs for New Yorkers and tax dollars to harmed communities. And for thousands of, of, of New Yorkers with marijuana arrests on their records, the steps we have taken will provide a new lease on life. Yes. So I want to hear a big, long New York round of applause for every single organizer who has pushed this through, through the years. transfer that energy to Washington. Amen. Yeah, yeah federal one. <laughs> and I want to tell you, today we're working to bring the focus of racial and economic justice you brought to the MRTA to the federal level. I, as I was the first congressional leader of any party to come out in support of ending the federal prohibition on marijuana. And I am proud of that. And right now with my colleague, Senator Booker, and Senator Wyden, we're going to put forward an advanced comprehensive cannabis reform legislation that will not only turn the page on this ch sad chapter in American history, but undo the devastating consequences of these, of these discriminatory and often bigoted policies. We got support across the country. Did you hear about South Dakota? Yeah, shocking, right? Hardly a liberal bastion. <laughs> they voted to legalize in November. <laughs> so this is happening across the country. We're going to get bipartisan support for our legislation. And we got to do it the right way, the right way.
We have a once in a generation opportunity to invest in communities of color, provide opportunity for folks who have been hit hard by the prohibition, all of the old arguments and fear mongering that crime would go up, that, that there would be a parade of horrible things hasn't happened. Justice Brandeis called the states the laboratory of democracy. And on marijuana, they have served just that role. We have taken the legalization to the laboratories of democracy. We did the experiments and the results are in. What we have accomplished in New York is just the beginning. Amen. I will fight with you until we get fair, just, and full legalization in Washington. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, folks. Yeah. Run for president, Chuck. Hey, everybody, that was Chuck Schumer. Yeah. Coming to speak at the Cannabis Parade and Rally. Would you believe it? Yeah, about time. Unbelievable, we've come a long way. Hey, Dan. All right, so we're going to continue on. Everybody heard about Happy, Happy Monkey? Yeah. Everybody love Happy Monkey? Great place to hang out. They move around town. They have great little lounges. They had an awesome 420 party. Let's hear it for Vlad, Batista, and Ramon Reyes. Oh, shit. Hey, Vladdy. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Monday! Batista, I'm just happy to be here, guys. You know, I, words can't put into, I can't put into words how I feel right now. But I gotta tell you guys, I, me and Ramon are born and raised on this island right here called Manhattan. But not on this side of the island. I'm from Harlem, he's from Washington Heights. We grew up and they told us we were supposed to be a statistic. That by now we're supposed to be dead or in jail. We have uh, been in the cannabis industry legacy market for 22 years. Four years ago we started a brand. They say you guys don't have billions, you can't do it. You can't make any change. But thanks to people like you believing in us, being the voice for the community, you guys supporting us, creating safe spaces for us to consume this plant. Here we are today, consuming it legally. Thank you to all the advocates, all the legislators, all the politicians that helped us do this. But I just want to say I'm honored to be here. And just last year, 94% of all arrests were black and brown people. And now here we are, you know, black and brown people, the ones that they were arresting, speaking here in front of you, and hopefully are going to be entrepreneurs that are going to make a difference and create opportunities and jobs for our communities. Instead of being a statistic like they wanted us to be, remember, ladies and gentlemen, happy bunker, we don't do it for the clout, we do it for the culture. I'm gonna keep it real, real short. Y'all already know Vladimir is the talk of the other pair. But, you know, we're in New York, so all I wanna hear is a yeah! I love you, everybody. I'm Ramon Reyes, and I represent Happy Monkey, and I represent New York City. Steve. All right, so uh, that was Happy Monkey, Ramon Reyes, and Vlad Batista. Now we have two New York activists, Jake Blyden with the Cannabis Cultural Association, and Ryan Lapore with New York's Normal, and also a Presto Doctor. Come on up, guys. Okay. What up, what up, NYC? What's up? Oh. Now that was me. What's up, NYC Cannabis Culture? Hey. New York! Yo, what's goody? My name is Jake. I am an NYC cannabis advocate, and I'm also a point person. If you need to know some information in this, in this industry or this culture, I'm the guy to talk to. I am also the founder of the Cannabis Cultural Association, Yay. a nonprofit based individual that has connected and kept the culture cultivated the last few years. Sure. And to Chuck Schumer's part, we also sued the federal government during the Trump administration. So we've been out here trying to make long strides. We gotta make sure when it comes to getting a business, get people out of jail, 
or even when it comes to my boy Ryan getting a medical card, y'all have the information possible. Alright? Lighting don't fight in New York. You gotta understand here, Jake Plowden, we would not have been where we are today without someone like Jake Plowden. Someone that understands this culture inside and out. My name is Ryan Laporte. I'm a part of New York City Normal, New York Normal. Jake put out to help people get medical cards as well. But New York City, this is an amazing moment that we have here. This moment that, hey, now cannabis is legal. We're using it in the parks. We're already doing that. <laughs> this culture's already been here. This whole movement started before the past 10 years, 20 or 30 years. We stand on the backs of so many people. People that are in the room today, and people that are not in the room today. So I want to give a big shout out, a big shout out to Doug Green and Liz, Liz Owens of Vocal New York, two big proponents activists who provided the lanes and avenues, the reason why we're here today. So I want y'all to take stock of how we got here today, connect with the different groups, and make sure you remember this is for the culture. This is for the culture at the end of the day. And make sure, at the end of the day, y'all don't even realize, when y'all leave here, y'all have just as much as power, power as we do. And any help y'all need to make sure this information goes back to your community, come to us. This is an ecosystem. This is about us building communities, not making money, not making money and forgetting about the next man and, and, and all that. This is about us. Light it, don't fight in New York. Yo, listen. New York, the world is watching. The world is watching right now. The world is here. We do this right here, we can show the world it can be done right forever. It's gonna be a moment in time where we look back at, oh, you remember when cannabis wasn't legal? One day we're gonna look at this and see, oh wow, society wouldn't be where it is today without cannabis. It's more than medicine. It's the freedom to express ourselves. We can do right here in so many ways what we haven't done right in so many other places. This cannabis industry, wouldn't exist without its consumers. It wouldn't exist without anybody that's taking a puff of cannabis. To y'all, I salute you. I salute everybody here. I salute all the businesses that took the time to educate. All the groups, all the organizers, all the actors, and all the legislators. Woo! Shout out to y'all. Peace. A lot of activists made things happen here in New York, including Jake Plot and Ryan Lepore, so thanks to them. We have another activist to come up now, Hector Gerardo with One Freedom for All. Hector worked with Start Smart on the MRTA, which stands for Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act. How you guys doing today? So um, I like to start, you know, I'm a community activist. I've been doing this for a long time. So I always like to start with a chant. And those who know about marching and yeah, there's some marching, chanting brings the energy up. So I just want to start up with a little chant. And he says, I will say it's a call and response. So I say, when they when they say get back, and then you say we fight, we, we say fight back. Get back, fight back. Y'all got it? Yep. They say get back. We say fight back. They say get back. We say fight back. They say get back. We say fight back. Get back. Fight back. Get back. Fight back. Get back. Fight back. Get back. Fight back. They say get back. We say fight back. Okay, thank you guys. So my name is Hector Gerardo. And I'm the executive director of One Freedom for All, a nonprofit organization in the South Bronx that work with youth around food insecurity and the school to prison pipeline in the intersections between the two. So my reason for being here is a lot of our young people are not able to go to college because they got a criminal record for smoking weed. And if you got a criminal record for doing cannabis or any criminal record, you don't get state um, or federal funding for you to go to college. So for me, you know, we all talk about the MRTA pass, the MRTA pass, but at the end of the day, 18 months needs to be waited before the first sales in New York State. 
in his 18 months, white people, and I'm gonna say that, white people with money are getting ready to put money into the business. And that money, where it's gonna go? 1% of black and brown people will make it in the industry. 1%. What happened to the other 99%? So we gotta make sure that we out there, not now, the 18 months, needs to be going to your elected officials so they can put funding back to education, so they can put funding for public housing, so they can put funding for the people that need it. Food insecurity is real in New York State, and we cannot be happy because we passed the MRTA. The MRTA is a pathway for generational wealth for communities of color. So we gotta take it in our hands to make sure that not 1% of the black people and brown people make money. We gotta make sure that the 100% of everybody in the community makes money out of this. Because at the end of the day, gentrifiers are coming. And if you're gonna come and open a cannabis store, any store in my community, you gotta pay a tax. You gotta pay a tax, and you gotta pay a tax to my nonprofit. You gotta give me money so I can organize the young people to build power in New York State. Because that's what we do. So I want to thank Bilal, the Star Smart Coalition, NYC Normal. I see you, uh, my man Supreme, Supreme Cuisine. I see you over there. So I want to thank everybody that put in the work, because we out here and we got to fight for what's right. And what's right is you got to pay your taxes. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for everybody here today. Is everybody having a good time? Yes! All right, so I'm going to score 20. I'm going to enjoy it. We have another uh, political speaker from the State Senate, Brian Benjamin. Wow, good afternoon, everybody. My name is State Senator Brian Benjamin, and I'm, I'm the person who actually signed recreational marijuana in the Senate into law. It is a pleasure to see you all here today, but I have a quick message and then I'm going to take my seat. In the city of New York, black and brown people were arrested at eight times the rate of white Americans. The social justice that this bill brings with expungement is incredibly important for the entire city and for the destruction of mass incarceration as we know it. But what is also the case is that the economic justice needs to be a part of this process as well. And I'm here to stand and fight for all of the communities, including those who were incarcerated for the selling of drugs to get their opportunity to be part of this legal market. So I'm gonna to continue to fight with all of you to make sure that by April 1st of next year, we have a functioning market for everybody. And I wanna say, we will finish the fight. I see you over there. We will keep it going. Thank you so much for being here. And I love the energy, the enthusiasm. Let's keep this going. Every state in the United States of America needs to legalize marijuana. And we're leading the way in making that, sure that happens. Thank you very much and enjoy. All right, let's hear it for Brian Benjamin, Senator. Shout out to Cliff and Hannah. Dozens in the house. <laughs> I'd like to uh, introduce two more activists. Uh, Joy Beckerman with Hemp Ace. She's one of the premier hemp experts in America. And Nicole Vecchi, who's with New York Small Pharma. Please come up and talk to people now, right now. Hello, Joy Zuckerman. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here, guys. As we celebrate, it's important to understand that NIMBYs, and if you don't know what NIMBYs are, NIMBYs are the acronym for Not In My Backyard. 
And so while we're all celebrating, understand that the NIMBYs in your town and your municipalities, they are also gathering and they are strategizing to figure out ways through zoning that they are going to arrest the development of the marijuana industry in the state of New York. And so they're gathering and they're organizing and they're going to be showing up in town, county, and other local meetings. And even if there is nothing cannabis related on those published agendas for your town and local and county meetings, we need to show up because all it takes is a segue or a new business opportunity for the NIMBYs to take over one of these meetings. And again, it is in the devil is in the details of zoning ordinances in your municipalities. So you need to protect what we have been able to gather here by showing up and counteracting any of those voices of the NIMBY. So please, be aware when those meetings are taking place, grab your friends and show up. I also want you to know, I work mostly in industrial hemp. New York has a very bold, amazing industrial hemp program here, including for CBD and other hemp-derived cannabinoids. It is very bold in that New York is the very first state who has actually put forth a milligram uh, limit for CBD in food, total cannabinoids in food, and total cannabinoids, and we're talking about hemp-derived cannabinoids in dietary supplements. They have done a huge service to the emerging industries for your farmers, for your consumers, and for your small businesses and entrepreneurs here in New York. But at the federal level, we still have not been able to get the FDA to create a regulatory framework for these legal and safe hemp-derived cannabinoids like CBD. New York has had to take it into their own hands to create a regulatory framework. So we need to pass HR 841 at the federal level. That is the hemp and hemp-derived CBD Consumer Protection and Market Stabilization Act of 2021. Please go to hempsupporter.com so that you can take two seconds, guys, to ask all of your representatives and senators to please sign on to HR 841. So far, only one New York representative has, Chris Jacobs of the 27th District. Again, hempsupporter.com. Also, show up at those meetings, guys. Uh, and finally, it is my great pleasure to turn us over to Nicole Ritchie, New York Small Farm. Thanks, Joy. Hello, Union Square. How's it going? New York Small Pharma, Pharma with an F, and we track regulations and laws and make sure that they stay socially equitable, environmentally friendly, and economically inclusive for everybody. And I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want to tell you your role in this. You have to be engaged. Democracy is not a spectator sport. You can join New York Small Pharma, you can join any of these groups. Keep track. You can call your senator, you can call your assembly member, you can call your federal senator, your federal congressman, and where you spend your money is your biggest power. There are big companies with billions of dollars moving in to build giant warehouses. Buy from your local farmer, buy from your local urban community gardens. Think about where you're purchasing. Are you buying organic? Are you buying safe for you? Don't spend money on corporate green. Don't give your money to big companies that are going to take your money out of the state. Spend on your community. Pay attention to where you're spending. And enjoy the win. Thank you, Joy and Nicole. We have a real special treat right now. People familiar with the Shinnecock Nation in Long Island? Native American community, New York. We have today Brian Polity, the Shinnecock Nation chairman, and Sinead Pollock, Shinnecock Nation tribal business leader, and the Shinnecock delegation. Please welcome them. Hawaii, New York. How's it going? My name is Brian Polite and I'm the chairman of the great and sovereign Shinnecock Nation. If you guys don't know Shinnecock, we are one of the most, uh, sorry, we are one of the most sovereign nations in the country and we also happen to be one of the first inhabitants of this great state of New York. We're really honored and blessed to be here today and we bring our blessings from our community to your community. For too long, the prohibition 
against marijuana has adversely affected people of color and especially indigenous people all throughout this country. It is not about just smoking a joint. It's about getting 10 years for smoking that joint, for having your life ruined, for losing a job. And that happens disproportionately all the time in communities of color, including Indian country. So today we bring good blessings and we bring the great spirit to bless us in our, our goal of trying to rectify all of the injustice that has been done by this awful prohibition. And so when we leave here today, let's leave here with the energy that we have built up from all of the speakers today. And let's turn that corner, not just in the states, but on a federal level, to Bootene, and God bless. What she shinnecock, what she pominaki, what she see one hockey, what she mon talk, what she wine dance, what she quash you off. My given name is I lead canoe, I am butterfly woman. I'm standing here with our tribal leader from the Shinnecock Nation. I'm also a descendant of the Montauk people who are still here. We are standing on our relatives' land the Lenape people. So we acknowledge this land. That song that I sung was a paddle song, canoe song. Because when we're here, our ancestors are here from those waters in which we are stewards of, those shores in which we are stewards of. We came here to do work. We also came to celebrate, and this is a very big achievement, not only for the great state of New York, but for all people, because this is a plant medicine. This is healing. But at the same time, here it is in 2021, when this is actually our first time being in this event. And we're very honored to be here, to be on this platform. But we still have work to do. Although we are at the table, we don't ask, we need to be respected. It's very important that we do realize that this sacred medicine, this sacred sister plant is grown on land that has been taken from us. And now here as Shinnecock people, as we have announced our entry into a very important industry, We've announced that years ago, but people are hearing us now. We thank you for hearing us, but we also ask that you support and stand with us as we advocate for this place, for our family, for our community. And one last thing. We are also one of those groups of social equity, diversity, inclusion. When they say black and brown, there's also red. When they say Asian, Latino, black, and something else, well that's something else. We're more than just something else. I'm not speaking to just the people here in the crowd. I'm also speaking to our elected officials. I'm also speaking with my ancestors and the elders that have been marching this particular march for since before I was born. So this is a responsibility and inheritance to all of us as young people of color to stand together. And I wanna thank those who have been marching as people of color that have brought us here and said, what about them? Because they were here first. So thank you, I hope.
Let's hear it for Brian Polite and, uh, and Sinead uh, Bollock. We're really honored to have Shinnecock here today. Thank you so much. Now we have someone who really started this whole thing here in New York. We had a lot to do with it. You better hear the Yippies, the Cures Not Wars organization that ran this event for so many years when it was known as the Smoke-In, and it was in Washington Square Park, and now we're in Union Square. And you may know him for the Global Marijuana March, and you may know him for the Joints for Jabs that took place here on 420. Please welcome Dana Beal. You know, I was thinking, um, a lot of times, like the founding people aren't around to see it, uh, so these guys decided they would like speak just when I was speaking. Thank you so much. All right, well look, I'm, I'm a teacher, really, and I, like, my job is to bring people information that you would not have even heard of yet. It's like when we first started marijuana. Nobody had gotten the idea that you could do mass rallies. That this was really something that would be a should be addressed through a civil rights movement. We did the first smoke-ins, and the smoke-in was actually the main uh, expression of it for many years. And the, the straights, the people in the suits, the people at normal said, well, you can't go out and just, like, be in people's face. You can't have that 15-year-old over there smoking the bong because you're going to get us all in trouble and you know we're corrupting minors so they were against marijuana smokers coming out in the same way every other group came out and actually it was an interesting story now, this is a story i should really tell you because it has to do with richard nixon and Richard Nixon, of course, did the first big war on marijuana after Anslinger was fired by the Kennedys. Because, you see, John Kennedy was a pot smoker who took LSD. But that's a different story. The story I'm here to tell you about is a man who got in in 1968, and all of a sudden, all over America, marijuana disappeared. It took about a year, but they had this thing called Operation Intercept. And by the end of 1969, there was no pot, but there was beginning to be a lot of Vietnamese heroin. This was very suspicious to us in the marijuana movement. So we called uh, for a smoking on the 4th of July. It was an innocent enough thing. It was kind of a peace demonstration, but Richard Nixon called his own event for exactly the same time to drown our event out. He called it Honor America Day. And we announced that we were going to have people uh, to try to defuse what we thought could be potentially a, a confrontation. You know, fisticuffs, you know, like Trump, Trump supporters who decide to punch you out kind of thing. So it got on national television. It got big, and they had this group of people at the head of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool in the Honor America Day. It was very hot. They were all dressed in heavy clothes, and we were all dressed in, like, shorts, <laughs> you know, and we couldn't get at them, so people dived into the reflecting pool and marched right up to where they were doing their thing, chanting, one, two, three, four, we don't want your fucking war. And see, this was right after Kent State, and everybody said, you're not gonna be able to get away with this, but we did. Anyway. So, Richard Nixon was obsessed, he was like a Donald Trump, he was obsessed with the idea that George McGovern had sent us so he broke into the, the Democratic Party headquarters trying to find proof of that. And it, it, there was Watergate and the impeachment. You all, all know how that turns out, right? Turned out great. Well, anyway, come to, you know, being under Jimmy Carter, 
We thought we were going to have marijuana be legal in 18 months. It was like now, right? With Chuck Schumer being here, he's got a Moore's Act. And I hope it gets through, because Bernie Sanders pointed out there's a, actually something in the Controlled Substances Act that Richard Nixon left for himself to be able to emergency deschedule any drug. Right? And that was because marijuana had a commission called the Schaefer Commission, and the Schaefer Commission hadn't come out yet. So they put a clause in the Controlled Substances Act, which is still there, that the president can order the attorney general to deschedule any drug. And Bernie said he would do it five minutes after he got into the White House. So the, Republic, the Democrats promised us, if you let us elect Biden, because we really got to stop Trump, and I really, I agree, we really got to stop Trump, we will frog march Joe Biden in to sign the bill. That's what they said. And, you know, that is the situation we're at now, and I do not understand exactly why Chuck Schumer didn't talk very much about what's happening in the Senate. I'm very much, I'm very concerned. There's a lady from um, New Hampshire named Jean Shaheen. And she's also in the news lately because she's very concerned about the United States withdrawing from Afghanistan. And she says that we can't legalize pot until we deal with the opiate crisis first. And you know, they're never gonna, never gonna totally solve that. So that's like saying, we're never gonna legalize pot, right? Well, we have a letter to get people like Carol Maloney and Chuck Schumer to send to the president, ordering him to, or imploring him, actually, ordering, or to order the Attorney General to deschedule Ibogaine. Because I, I'm sure many of you know about Ibogaine, right? Unfortunately, most people in this country never heard about it. This is one of the other things that this organization and this march has been working on. We have a cure for drugs. And in case you don't know, 30 minutes after you take your Ibogaine in the morning, your heroin withdrawal completely goes away and never comes back. We have the cure for methamphetamine. We have the cure for cocaine. It works for alcohol and tobacco. It's an equal uh, opportunity uh, addiction interrupter. Uh, one third of all the people who did it for heroin found out that they put, uh, just put down cigarettes. You know? So this happens to be from an African sacred plant. And it's like knowledge that was been stolen from African Americans that there's this plant from Africa that can cure everybody of heroin addiction. So we're going to need a little help here getting this across because we're going to ask Schumer to get Jean Shaheen to co-sign the letter to Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland asking them how Ibogaine could be Schedule 1. Not because it's a miracle cure, because it's easy to be a miracle cure and be banned. Marijuana is a miracle cure. It was banned for a long time. No, it's Schedule 1 because people actually do not want to take it. If you take too much, it makes your car sick. Uh, actually, the amount you have to take to get off heroin it's only compared to heroin withdrawal, which is one of the worst things in the world, that it's kind of tolerable. But there are people, there's no Ibogaine spots on the corner. This is not a drug in commerce, in illegal drugs. This is not there. So how could it ever have been Schedule 1? It is supposed to have a high potential for abuse. And, I, you know, I have a friend named Randy Critico, you know him? He's, he brought Roger Stone 
to my place while I was in prison. Uh, and, you know, that's cool. But later I, I asked Roger Stone, look, could you just add, tell Donald Trump? Because I would tell anybody, I would tell any of me, right? Look, there's a cure for heroin. Maybe somebody in your retinue, you know? So, uh, we told Donald Trump, and of course, he wasn't interested. Because the guy is actually only interested, in, I don't you could, I can't even figure that guy out, you know? I will say one thing. What happened on January 6th was a fascist putsch. It was equivalent to the beer hall putsch. And there's a lot of marijuana people in the anti-vaxxer group who are kind of supporting Donald Trump. And I will say that I believe we can get marijuana without having to compromise with the devil. You know? But um, we got a lot of Republicans who are pro-marijuana now. And I think we just run John Boehner for president. I'm sure he would beat Trump in a minute. He's much more personable, okay? So they don't have to pick like an outright Nazi for president. He is running, you know. And if Biden doesn't legalize pot, it's going to be very bad. It's like when, right before the election, Hillary Clinton wouldn't really come out for legalizing pot. She says, we're going to make it Schedule 2. Schedule 2 is like cocaine and methamphetamine. It's really illegal. You're going to jail for a long time. So, you know, that was not what people wanted to hear. And a lot of people voted for Gary Johnson, and then a lot of them became Trump supporters. So we're going to have to somehow get those guys over to us when... Right now, they're kind of... They really believe that Donald Trump is still president. You, you guys all know about QAnon, right? Yeah, they, these, these people are completely insane. Okay. So anyway, you can help. I, I'm just, you know, like a, a survivor. But I, I've been around for 50 years, and I've seen it come true. So I know that we can do more. And the thing is, while I was waiting for marijuana to become legalized, we developed a lot of other really great ideas. So now we can work on them. And I hope that you will come. We're going to have a table later. We're going to do joints for jams again. If you, if you did your vaccination duty, then you get a free joint. So, stay tuned, stay with the movement. I, I'm on the ACT UP meeting every Monday night at the Drug User Rev. And uh, I'm reachable uh, through Troy or Bloom or any of the people. And a lot of people just know me. Uh, we're supposed to get a new building for the city. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Otherwise, I'm going to be homeless. Uh, I'm being, the eviction was stayed by COVID. It's like the judge decided they're evicted, right? They couldn't enter the order because of COVID, right? So, but someday soon, like in six months, we're going to have to come up with, with a new building. And, you know, maybe you guys can support that because we need something for the pot movement, something for the counterculture. Something like the Yippie Museum down at Number 9 Bleaker. We gotta bring back Number 9 Bleaker, but then you're gonna have to get rid of the guy with the boxing studio. Anyway, my name is Dana Beal. I'm, I'm known in society in general as the, the pot guy, but in the pot movement, I'm known as the Ibogaine guy. So if you have a friend that you know, I, I, I'm the only place where you can get an Ibogaine treatment for $1,200 in Toronto, okay? 
And when we had the medical marijuana, we had medical marijuana for three dollars a gram. Okay. So that's what we're for. We're not for the multinationals making a billion dollars. We're for the little people. We are working, by the way, to have a municipal grow. And you can support this. And you see this guy from Act Up here? Brandon. Put your hand up. Brandon is helping coordinate the municipal grow with Nick from NYMMJ. It's a new organization starting up. And we're going to have the city donate uh, well, lease, lend, you know, every vacant lot in the city to people to grow their six plants. And that's the municipal growing. And that will do something about, like, patient access and price. So, uh, stay tuned. If you want to, like, a really legalized pot on the UN level, if you want to be able to take good LSD again, and LSD is very, very delicate. And you have to have it be handled just right. But there's LSD that makes you feel like God kissed the outside of your brain. Okay, so we need better psychedelic drugs. Not adulterated. Good quality psychedelic drugs. And you can help by if you know a trumper who's kind of a, better, a marijuana person, but they're Donald Trump, give them eight and a half grams of magic mushrooms. That'll do it. Okay, thank you very much. This was John Sinclair's, this was John Sinclair's uh, idea. Well, you know, there's still like a Black Panther component. There's a secret Black Panther factory in the Ghana, in the house previously occupied by W.E.B. Du Bois, manufacturing Ibogaine for the inner city. It's happening. That was Dana Beal. That was for Dana Beal. Then we have Deep Brother Sean Smith from Connecticut, Women Grow CT, Canna Health. She's a Canna nurse. She's going to talk to you a little bit about the health benefits of cannabis. Hi, everybody. How y'all feeling? It's a good day to be in New York. Beautiful day. I'm so proud of the work that you've done. My name is Kiva Smith Bolden. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. I'm a registered nurse and I'm the CEO of Canna Health. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit real quick how I got into the cannabis industry. My grandmother, who was an 88-year-old, vibrant, beautiful woman, suffered an aneurysm and it devastated her mind and her body. And after rehab, she came to live with me and she just wasn't participating. And I, I just couldn't figure out why she wouldn't want to get better. And I had to realize that my grandmother was in pain. I, and, and so we had to manage her pain before she could begin to get better and rehabilitate herself. So I remember that maybe like a decade before, my grandmother said due to severe arthritis, she had to smoke a joint and take a bath just to get her body moving. So I said, okay, we'll get grandma high. That's what we're gonna do. And luckily we found someone who, who was able to medicate her and within a month, we saw such a complete turnaround in her overall health status that I wanted to study it because being a nurse who worked in the community, I had never seen those kind of improvements in people in such a quick um, time frame. So I found a school in Massachusetts. Um, I studied the plant. I learned about the science of the plant, how it's used as medicine, how it can manage symptoms. But what really grabbed my attention was how cannabis came to be prohibited and the effect that that racially motivated prohibition had on my community through the words, through calling it a war on drugs, which was really a war on our people. And I decided that not only did I want to bring that medicine and talk about cannabis in a new way to my community, but I also wanted to advocate
advocate, which is exactly what you all have done in New York to get legislation changed, to free the plant, free the people, and to help people begin to renew and rebuild their lives after lives in communities being utterly destroyed. So I just came really real quick, up 95, to say congratulations, good work. I'm about to tear shit up. <laughs> Congratulations, good work to all the advocates, my women grow family, my minorities for medical want marijuana family, all my cannabis family here. I just want to tell you how proud I am and I also want to extend my gratitude because your movement, your movement as one here in New York has helped to make Connecticut start to move. So Connecticut will be up next with fair, equitable legalization if I have anything to do with it. And it's all because of you. So thank you, New York. I love y'all. So many great activists and speakers today. How's everybody doing? Are you excited we legalize marijuana here in New York? All right. So what does it stand for? M-R-T-A, marijuana. Regulation and Taxation Act. One more time. Marijuana, Regulation and Taxation Act. That's what we passed to legalize cannabis here in New York. Like Pilar says. Listen to Pilar. Okay, we have Phelan, Don Patrick. Phelan is running for City Council District 3 on West, West Side Manhattan. I think people should vote for him. I want to hear it. Black Lives Matter. That's right. Brown Lives Matter. That's right. My name is Phelan Dante Fitzpatrick. I'm running for city council here in District 3, right next door. I'm also a proud dad to that beautiful little girl right there in the pink dress. Her name is Artemis. Everyone say hi, Artemis. I'm so honored and proud to be here, joining with you guys to celebrate this historic cannabis parade. The first time that New York, New Yorkers like you, New Yorkers like look like us, are able to get together and celebrate the end of racist marijuana criminalization and celebrate the fact that we are now re returning justice to hundreds of thousands of black and brown members of our community that have been deprived of justice because of bad policies and bad racist laws. If I'm elected, I will be the first person of color to ever be elected in District 3 in New York City history. Well, what does that mean? That means that this will be the first time that the needs of working people the needs of black people, the needs of brown people in this community will be put first instead of the needs of for-profit real estate developers. People in office who are apathetic, who don't care about our needs, will come first. I'm really, really proud to be here today. My father was an activist his entire life. The day before my 19th birthday, my father was murdered in a hate crime. He'd be really proud of me. He'd be really proud of what I'm doing, what I'm trying to accomplish, but mostly he'd be proud of all of you, activists who have been doing this for years, standing up for their communities. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy and proud to be here. I thank you for your support and letting me speak here today. I, I, I hope you guys have a, a blessed, blessed week and a wonderful day. Thank God for you guys. Thank you so much. I'm digging those drums back there. Yeah. All right, so we have two uh, uh, female uh, activists here. We got Emily Ramos. Yeah. Emily Ramos over here. She's the co founder of Hi Me Madre. I love that. And we have Alicia, Alicia Reap. 
she's with National Expansion Week, NEW. Let's hear it for them. Hi, everyone. How are you? Yes. So, my name is Alicia Reed. I'm here with National Expungement Week, but I'm also a spiritual herbalist. So, I'm going to take a moment before we even begin to kind of remember and reflect on the power of this plan. And I want us to really, if you have, if you're smoking, hold it up. But I want us to kind of center ourselves and ground ourselves on everything that has happened and all the impacts that this this herb has had on people of color you know and those who have kind of come into its pathways in a negative in a negative way so please take a moment of silence Thank you. Thank you. I want to note that this plant has a, it has a piece of us, right? It's been all over the world, and this plant has come through so many cultures, and for so long we have denied how wise this plant is. But I'm here to remind us that this plant is very wise. This plant continues to nurture us. This plant continues to mirror ourselves within as, and as we do work with this plant. So above all, I just want to take a moment and, and share some of that message. I am a friend, is what this plant tells me. I am an ally, holding you wherever you are, nurturing you, listening to you, and allowing you to release through centuries by enlightening you and by guiding you to the depths of yourself. I am mirroring every version of yourself to you. Work with me in doses. Don't abuse me. Embrace me as you do your material items and care for me as you do your closest things. And build a relationship with this plant. Practice self-awareness and there's so much more work to do. I'm going to hand it over to Emily. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, my name is Emily Marie Ramos Rodriguez. I am a founder and worker owner of Jaime Madre. We are a women and femme of color marijuana cooperative here in New York City. Uh, one of the first incubated by Green Worker Co-op Academy in the South Bronx. A business incubator program that helps people of color, especially those in the Bronx area, start their own businesses so that we can create intergenerational wealth in, this com in our communities. We gotta make sure that when we're talking about marijuana legalization, we're talking about repairing the harms for those who've been impacted most by marijuana prohibition. Those who are still trying to repair their lives from being impacted by prohibition of marijuana. Specifically black and brown communities here in New York City, not black and brown communities. We want to fight for justice for black and brown communities all across the America, but we want to make sure, and abroad, but we want to make sure that when we're talking about marijuana legalization in New York, we're prioritizing the communities in New York first. And we can ensure we do that with a moratorium on licensing. We can make sure we do that with residency requirements, making sure that New York City is the only one that gets to profit off of the prohibition of our people in New York City, and we could do that through the regulatory period. So. We may have gotten some one step closer to marijuana justice, but we have not reached marijuana justice yet. The work has just begun. So start reaching out to your city councilmen, start reaching out to your senators, start reaching out to your assembly members, those that were here today especially, that are your allies, and let them know that the work is not done. They better represent us in the regulatory period. They better have people from our communities on the regulatory board, on the control board, on the advisory board to ensure that our communities are reflected in this legislation and that it's implemented correctly. It's implemented with our communities being prioritized and that we don't get fucked over like every other state that has legalized marijuana so far where people are still trying to get equity for their communities years after marijuana has been Life. Let's not be like them. Let's show them how New York does it. New York does it best. Everybody is looking to how New York legalizes marijuana. Every state in this country, federal government, other countries in the world are looking to enter this market. Are we going to let them? Hell no! Is that how New York does it? No. no. It's not. On this May Day, we're fighting for workers in the marijuana industry and workers across the world. Workers in Puerto Rico, workers abroad. Let's not forget what this is about, why we're doing this on May Day. 500 years of colonies, bullshit! 
Yerberas unidos en más ser vestido. Boricuas unidos en más ser vestido. Trabajadores unidos en más ser vestido. Thank you. And we're going to end with the chant. Can some of y'all help me? I'm going to start by saying Amandala. And I need you to say back to me, Awetu. Amandala. Awetu. Amandala. Awetu. Amandala. Awetu. Thank you. Amala Wetu means power to the people. It was a chant that was used by Nelson Mandela when they were fighting apartheid in South Africa. So we don't forget that these movements are not just here in New York, they're abroad. And our people from New York, we come from all over. Our families are also abroad. So the political is always personal, so don't forget that. Let's hear it for uh, Emily Ramos Woo! and Alicia Reed. Terrific. Woo! Our next speaker is going to talk about the next issue. We've legalized marijuana. How about legalizing psychedelics? Yeah! Let's hear it from Haley. Haley gets from de decriminalized nature. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Haley Getz. I am a proud queer psychonaut. Uh, we exist too. It is not just Terrence McKenna. Uh, anyways, I am here with Decriminalized Nature New York City, and I am holding in my hand our resolution. Uh, we are trying to pass this resolu resolution or get support from city council members. Uh, there is an election coming up. You, all of you, uh, can help in this fight. Reach out to your council member, find your council member, and ask them to support our resolution. We have been working on this for months and months now, and this really needs to happen. So anyways, Decrim Nature New York City, so we are a nationwide educational campaign. We're working to decriminalize entheogens, which includes psilocybin mushrooms, iboga, ayahuasca, and cacti containing mescaline. So, these plant medicines have been utilized for hundreds of years for religious and spiritual purposes throughout the world, and they're being criminalized. People's religious and spiritual freedoms are being criminalized. We have seen that these plant medicines have provided significant assistance in treating depression, anxiety, PTSD, end-of-life anxiety, and treatment-resistant addictions. An entire class of alternative modalities of healing are currently being criminalized. Uh, we see that world-renowned institutions, including Johns Hopkins University and our very own New York University, have full-on departments dedicated to researching and studying the benefits of psychedelics, and yet, psychedelics and plant medicines, still criminalized. Uh, so we have seen that, uh, you know, these plant medicines can heal and they need to be decriminalized. They need to be decriminalized now. It is our inalienable right to develop and cultivate our relationship with nature. Once again, find your council member, reach out to their council member. We need support to pass this resolution. Finally, I just want to say that decriminalized nature is in solidarity with this long, long-standing fight to legalize marijuana. We stand behind the expungement of criminal records. And as we know, there exists a huge disparity of criminalizing and incarcerating individuals of color for mar marijuana-related offenses. We are also fighting for the expungement of criminal records for individuals who are incarcerated for possessing, cultivating, and selling plant medicines. And once again, individuals who are utilizing these plant medicines to help with addiction, to help with PTSD, to help with uh, mental health. We are advocating and uh, we need to decriminalize this now. Uh, so, you know, New York, we are a very progressive city, very progressive state. We are entering a completely new era of human health and well being. Even, you know, these. Things have been around for hundreds of years, but in terms of widespread uh, support, we are entering a new era. Uh, so we've got to continue fighting this war on drugs. It is long from over. we got to continue the fight. Drug users are people too. Thank you. Thank you, Haley Getz from Decriminalized Nature. Yeah. Who likes mushrooms? Yeah. I know I do. But therapeutic.
Hispanic youth, of course. Right. Please welcome Edwin De Jesus Jr. from the Green Party of New York. Hello everyone. My name is Edwin De Jesus Jr. and I'm a candidate for New York City Council's 22nd District. I'm a proud member of the Green Party. Today I'm representing the Green Party of New York. They are longtime champions of legalization and they attend this event every year. Look, we need to take the revolution outside of the two-party duopoly. You can't shoehorn a working class movement into a corporate party. The politicians are bought up by special interest money from big pharmaceutical companies who want us to be addicted to opioids because they know that plant-based medicine works. That's why they gaslight us and they tell us that we need to buy from them. They want it to be illegal. We're going to say no to the big pharmaceutical companies. We're going to say no to corporate greed. Corporate greed has taken thousands of lives. Greed is a virus. And we need to address the mental health crisis right now. And we can do that, as uh, the person who was just speaking mentioned, with psychedelics. We need to decriminalize all drugs. Psilocybin mushrooms especially because it's known for its effects on mental health. It can nearly cure addiction, depression, stress, anxiety, PTSD, trauma. Look at the research NYU is doing right now. We need to fund that. Right now we're giving tax breaks to billionaires for no reason, but our people are dying on the streets. And right now police brutality is rampant and we can stop that by ending the war on drugs. The number one reason we have mass incarceration is because of the war on drugs. So let's stop terrorizing African American, Latino American youth for having possession and expunge all the records of nonviolent drug offenders, not just those who are carrying the legal amount. So if you stand with us and you stand with our movement, please feel free to message me personally on Instagram. My name is Eddie Astoria, E-D-D-I-E -D -D -E, Astoria, or go to edwinfornyc.com. Thank you. Well, I call him Edwin, but he's Eddie DeJesus Jr. from the Green Party of New York. Let's hear it for Eddie. Awesome, Eddie. Now, a couple of people have been involved with this event for the last few years. They helped us organize the event. We have Michael O'Malley, who's also with Curved Papers, which are easy to roll. And we have Stu Zakem, who's our publicist, with Bridge Strategic Communication. They're going to say a few words. Hey, New York, we're legal. Kurt Papers has uh, built a company here in New York. We're a New York company. I'm born in Brooklyn. My father's born in Brooklyn. My kids are New Yorkers. I'm so proud of New York. We're always working with the advocates as a company supporting their uh, organizational events. And we were involved with joints for jabs on Tuesday. All the joints for jabs were rolled with Kurt Papers. They're easy to roll. The main message we're always supporting is unity. We gotta get together. If you're red or blue, it doesn't matter. Yes. If you're tall or short, we still love you. Yes. Even Met fans and Yankee fans should get along. Go New York! It's hard to follow Michael's act, but... I must tell you, it's great to be here, see this crowd, what a beautiful day. Thanks to Steve Bloom for putting this together and delivering Senator Schumer here. Uh, New Jersey is legal as well, and will probably be open before you hear. So I get, I'll be seeing many of you on the PATH train in Hoboken, New Jersey City. But thanks for coming. Shout out to Cool Suppliers. They're putting these boxes in a thousand stores in New York this spring. Look for you. Her papers in your bodegas. Yeah. All right, that was some shameful self-promotion, but we're gonna let him get away with that today. This perfect yeah, yeah, yo. easy to roll. Yo. I said it, I said it. Me too. Okay, we have two more New York activists, Colleen Marie. Yo, 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 yo. One more for, for her. her program. For her, one more. NYC Normo. Right here for her. And for her. Pedro Reyes. She's the board chair of the Cannabis Cultural Association. What's up, New York City? Hold them high, everybody. Hold them high. Two questions. Do we trust the government to do this right? No! Do we trust the corporate cannabis companies to do this right? No! Who do we trust? I'm starting a national multi-state operator community. 
the HEART program. It stands for healing, education, assistance, reinvestment, reentry, and training. We go where they go to ensure that community reinvestment is done by the community, not the corporations, and we can't trust the government to do this right. We're launching in the next couple months. Thank you to Steve Bloom. I'm on the board for New York City Normal. Big shout out to Normal. We passed the MRTA. We legalized it. Hey all, um, wonderful to see so many beautiful faces again since it's been too long since we've had hugs. Happy that we're getting together to celebrate something so wonderful as legalization. And you know, that was the easy part. That was the easy part. Now we roll up our sleeves and we actually do the hard work of ensuring that everything that was promised to us gets delivered. So there have been a lot of hardworking activists to ensure that we've gotten to this point. It's on us now to keep it going, guys. It's on us to ensure that it stays ethical and safe and sound and represents people, POCs. So that's what we're here for, guys. Again, all cultures use cannabis. Not all cultures are treated the same. That's why we're here today to ensure that all our rights to smoke this plant, to have this plant, to have this medicine in our lives is taken care of. Thank you so much, beautiful people. Peace out. Plant belongs to everyone. Peace out. Amanda Reyes and Colleen Murray views Amanda is one of our former MCs. All right, we're winding down. We want to bring up two friends of the movement, of the uh, event, and former editors and employees of High Times Magazine, as I am, Danny Danko from Northeast Leaf, and Rick Cusick, who's on the normal board of directors and has some website called Reef for Dadness. doing this for 25 years. I've been coming up here. I've been saying, let's go. I mean, ranks, everything. 25 fucking years. First time I can say these words. It's legal! And 25 years ago, I'll tell you something. We had like 35% of New York City, New York State, the United States of America wanted legalization in the United States. For 25 years, one fucking point a year. 36, 37, 38, 39, 2010, it hit 50 points a year. That's when shit really started to begin happening. Then it was 52, 53 now. 60% of the people here want legalization of marijuana. 95% people want medicalization of marijuana. And in New York City, marijuana is legal! I just had to get that out of my system. And let me tell you something, this here, this is from California, and what's going to happen in the next year, the weed around here is going to get so fucking good, you won't believe it. It's not that it's legal, it's not the quality is going to come up. The quantity is going to come up. And right now, I'm going to give you the man who gave us the quality, who gave us the quantity, ladies and gentlemen, Danny Danko. All right, New York City, you guys, we did it! We did it, you did it! And, and we got the bill that we wanted, not the one that was the compromise. That's because you guys pushed for it. And this is New York. This is the home of the delivery services. This is the home of the Yippies. This is the home of this march, the Million, Million Marijuana March, Cannabis Freedom, the home of Sour Diesel, the home of the Hayes. All right, we represent. Now, a lot of people talked about a lot of the great things in this bill. We talked about social equity. We talked about uh, the consumption lounges, our friends at Happy Monkey. I want to talk about home grow because this bill, this bill allows you to grow your own. So if you're worried about corporate cannabis, you're worried about Marlboro or Monsanto coming in, you don't have to worry anymore. You can grow your own. You can buy a tent, put up a light, and start growing your six plants legally. Anyone in New York can start growing their six plants and it's 12 per household. So if it's more than one person in the household, that's 12 plants. Now they don't tell you how big you can grow them, so grow them big, all right? You don't have to grow tiny little plants. 
You can veg them out and grow them as big as you want. Share them with your friends. Share them with your family. Give it away as medicine for people who need it. That's the key. So vote with your dollars. You do not have to buy corporate cannabis. Grow your own. It's legal. All right, so we're done with the speeches. A lot of great speeches today, right? Like Chuck Schumer? Like Alessandra Piaget? Like Brian Benjamin? We have so many great speakers today. And we're going to finish the day with some music. Now, there was a guy named David Keel. And David Keel was what they called the marijuana minstrel. He wrote songs about marijuana. I like marijuana. Legalized marijuana. He wrote many songs about marijuana. He was a friend of our cannabis trade and rally. And we are going to do a little tribute to end the day with I Like Marijuana. Do you like marijuana? Do you like cannabis? All right, we like marijuana and cannabis. We're going to be singing I Like Marijuana.
everybody. We're pretty much winding down here. It looks like we have a whole protest going on over there. So much going on here in the park. Uh, we have a few more things we want to do. We have Susan Overeem coming. coming. She's filed for a Type 9 multi-candidate committee. Uh, she's looking to put New Yorkers on the ballot. Hello, New York City oh. Cannabis Parade. I am so honored and grateful that you took the time to hear me today on International Workers' Day. I want to point out that the New York State Democrats have gone ahead with their COVID policies and transferred wealth from the working class to the 1%. They took our jobs. I plan to enact a Type 9 multi-candidate committee. I believe that New York City Council should be a power base of politicians who resist Albany. We should not be locked in our homes again. And it won't happen again. They cannot take our jobs again. If you stand in solidarity, I ask that you sign my petition. Okay? I want to put myself on the ballot. What? Doug. Thank God for Jeff and Doug. Yes, Doug yeah. is awesome. Yeah. And for everybody supporting him. Yeah. Lift Doug up. Thank you, lift Doug up. My pleasure. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have a. Uh, only one working mic, you know, there should be three, but there's only one. Well, I met Doug in 1989. He wandered into number nine because we were working on the annual pot parade. He didn't immediately buy into everything about the hippies. You know, he's, a, he's kind of a libertarian from the Long Island, right? But eventually he did get into the Ibogaine thing, whatever, and it became very important. He, he was on the board of the Global Ibogaine Therapy Alliance. And I will say, when Doug uh, met his fate at the um, wheels of a subway train, uh, it really hurt them. And actually, it, they almost completely collapsed because they didn't have the guy who was like, kind of the bureaucrat that could run it, right? And that's what it takes. And also, it was a factious group. They're a fractious group, you know, so that could kind of smooth things over. But I was at the Doug Memorial, and I was very, very struck by something, because, you know, normal ever since 1978 and that little uh, misadventure with cocaine, uh, they've been kind of been down on other drugs. They, they you know, they, they don't like say we're down on other drugs. Of course, they're for decriminalizing all drugs, right? but they don't champion it. It's like you could say, well, if you have AIDS wasting, when you eat that brownie, it's not a psychological effect of making you uh, think you're hungry. That's what Kevin Sabin and the anti people. No, it's actual effect on your gut. It's anti-inflammatory. And that cannot be replaced by Vicodin or Zoloft, okay? So the, the point is, the Ibogaine is kind of like that. So we, we've adopted it as another medical marijuana kind of drug, you understand? Because it'll help so many people. Um, and I was struck by when Normal called, National Normal called us, and they put in a whole paragraph about Doug's work with Ibogaine. It was like when Doug died, National Normal, after 40 years, recognized the Yippies Ibogaine. So this is a pretty big deal, actually. Doug really meant something, and he'll, you know, like I said, we're we're gonna try to open up clinics all over the world. Somewhere there will be a Douglas Green clinic. We miss you, Doug. I know that you're watching here. You're here with us. We love you so much, Doug. All right, everybody. I want to thank you all for coming. This is our final speech of the day. The Cannabis Parade is officially over.
And I would like to announce that Joints for Jabs is handing out free joints to anybody that has proof of vaccination. Yeah, for, and you know, we, we're just a First Amendment exercise, we're just a table. So when all this stuff kind of goes away, we'll still be here. You know, so um, you don't have to actually leave, even though the CUNY Stevens students probably want <laughs> the rest of the space. Uh, but there also will be joints for jams at the Gay and Lesbian Parade, I can announce so. Uh, oh, and you can come to the ACT UP meeting on Monday nights on Zoom. What? Hey everyone. Well, I've been going, this is the pie man, Aaron K, the yippee pie thrower. I had to get out of fucking rehab to come here and I had to hem and haw to get a fucking pass to get out. But I got out to be here with you because two years is too long. And the thing is, we got a lot to deal with, baby. We got tens of thousands of prisoners a week in America's gulags. I believe we should have instant release and immediate restitution with interest for each day spent in the slammer. Because the Nazis did it, the members of my family, they fucked with them, and they had to pay the survivors. We are survivors of a Nixon, Trumpian holocaust. Look at these motherfuckers in the Capitol, you know? Especially Camp Auschwitz. I got fucked by Facebook, so I wanted everybody to give that guy tons of crank calls. You know, I, I, maybe Farsebook is better. Farsebook? Yes. So the thing is, we got to be careful, baby, not to deal with that crew, you know? Because they may smoke pot, but that don't mean shit to a tree. You know, I would never smoke pot with a Nazi, never. I, I'd rather punch a Nazi in the mouth. Aaron, what do you sell Oh, there's a funny story about Roger Stone. Uh, about a week after Roger Stone came over to Nine Fleeker, he calls up the office. I answered the phone! And he wanted to buy pot. I told him we don't deal out of here. And, and I wouldn't deal to him because I don't know him. Because the old policy don't deal to strangers. And Roger Stone is more than a stranger. He's a pretty strange stranger. No, he's a pretty strange stranger. He's part of the Giuliani crew. Now it's going to be the, the saga of Roto Rudy. Giuliani toilet paper. He's got problems. His daughter Caroline is in the three-way sex who smokes pot. <laughs> She wrote an article in Vanity Fair. Give her a hand for standing up to Rudy. While her brother can't stand, while her brother kisses Rudy's ass. One. Okay. Okay, enough on, enough on Rudy. But anyway, time to fight back. Let's, let's give Rudy Giuliani credit for the worldwide marijuana march. Because he banned this event, in 1997, completely banned it. We took it global. And there is marijuana liberation all over the world thanks to the internet and Rudy Giuliani. Maybe he can figure out a way to put Trump in prison. Go back to that tape. He took the hell you fucked that Hey, I guess it's time to end it. No, 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 no. Right. Okay, now just take, listen, just pick up the garbage as you leave, and leave, you know, in a calm manner, mellow manner. So, I guess that's it. Give a hand to Steve Bloom. Let's hear it. Dana.
Jesse D'Angelo and yourselves for making it happen. And Carmen! And yes. And Carmen! Hey, listen, we're all here. And give a hand to our friends who are on the other side celebrating May Day is J Day in the other side. Thanks. Thanks, Pyman. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Please, clean up your shit. Don't leave garbage. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to clean it up for you.